You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We have the one and only, there can be no substitutes, Walter Bosley joining us this week on the Paracast. He hasn't been here in a few months or even a year or so. He has been a busy bee and we'll find out more in a moment. Our weekly guest co-host is none other than J. Randall Murphy. Welcome back, Randall. Glad to be here. It should be a good show. Now, just to let everybody know here, Randall and I have been busy bees too. We're preparing for some updates of the site and introduction of a new online store to get Paracast merchandise official, except no substitutes, official Paracast merchandise. So that's going to be pretty exciting. You'll have that announcement hopefully this month. The other thing I did last night, and I was up all night doing this, I'm going to try to be non-technical. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I do a second radio show called The Tech Night Out Live, and I don't want to have people, people interested in that stuff to have to understand what I'm saying. So I'll make it easy here and non-technical, which is I did some work on the back end of our web server to optimize performance because we've seen situations, which some of you know, where the site really is fast and sometimes it kind of drags a little bit. And they say if a site is too slow to come up, people will go somewhere else. I don't need that. You know, there's so many sites to choose from. So I work to optimize it so that the issues or instances where it slows down are not severe. It's still going to happen when thousands and thousands of people are downloading a brand new episode of the PowerCast on Sunday morning. It's still going to be a little bit of a slug, but I try to do all sorts of changes recommended by our web host Namecheap to make things work better. And I hope they do. That's it. Randall, you want to say anything about what's going to come for the site and the new store? Give like a little bit of a hint. Well, we've got another person working with us from Denmark who is helping to build an online shopping feature into it and is essentially really generously uh, putting in a lot of work to rebuild the homepage and add new products and make it more interesting and easier to use. So it's looking good. I think we've got a good little team going here with that. And uh, we'll just have to see how it uh, develops over the course of August. Now we've had online stores from time to time on the PowerCast and we had Cafe Press. And then we went to a company, I think from Canada, that went out of business without telling me. So suddenly people can't order official Paracast merchandise. But this is starting to sound like an ad and I don't want it to be. You know, I just want to make things convenient for everybody. If you have any problems with our site or have ideas of things we can do other than go to that other place, which some people might want, write us news at theparacast.com or click on the contact link on our site or in the forums at forum dot the com. Now, when we have Walter Bosley with us, it's an exciting time because he's got this really, really extensive background with the FBI and intelligence. I don't want to get political because sometimes that happens. But as a former FBI agent, what is your feeling about the agency being attacked so much? As non-political as we can make it. Right. Oh, well, you can talk about that. But first of all, let me correct you again. It's former Air Force OSI agent. I was an operational specialist when I was with the FBI. I just want to make that distinction again because they, they, they're they very sensitive about those distinctions. <laughs> okay. Uh, operational specialist as opposed to an agent. What's the to difference? A, yeah, I, was, I, I worked undercover. I had two, two of my assignments, uh, San Francisco and Manhattan. I worked undercover. Um, I was, uh, you know, I worked out there on the street, as they say, when I was assigned to San Francisco. And I worked at an undercover location doing a sensitive counterintelligence work while in Manhattan. And you don't have to be an agent to do those particular tasks. And then from the FBI, I went to the Air Force and I immediately, they hired me to put me in OSI as an agent. 
because of my bureau experience. So after officer training school, got my commission and I like went home for Christmas and then immediately after the holidays reported to the agent academy. And I spent all my active duty time with the Air Force as a special agent of the Air Force OSI. And then after that, when I left the Air Force, I went into um, counterterrorism, working around the world, doing that stuff. Interesting okay. progression, yes. Very interesting. So hearing the Department of Justice, the FBI, <clears throat> constantly and chronically attacked. I know uh-huh. it's hard to be non-political because that's so political. What's your feeling? Well, as I said, you can actually discuss these issues, fortunately, without being political, even though there's, a, as we know, there's a lot of politically motivated stuff on both sides going on out there. Um, however, from the perspective of, you know, the, the, the on the street operational, former operational employee, you know, kind of thing, I still have, you know, um, contacts in the organization. And I can tell you that, um, you know, 90 percent of them are disgusted with some of the stuff that's going on within their own upper management ranks, um, very much so. I find it disappointing because during my time with the FBI, I had nothing but a positive experience. And I learned, you know, the basics. I was essentially first taught to be a spook when I was with the FBI. And then, you know, all the stuff after that was more advanced and carried it further. But, you know, I cut my uh, spook teeth, so to speak with the bureau and i like the bureau and i hate to see uh, you know this uh, for whatever reason for whatever reason without getting into the reasons i i just hate to see this kind of crap happening within and to and and you know of the organization and you know my sources tell me that you know 90 percent of the the folks out there agree with that they just they got a job to do they do a hell of a job they're out there really trying to get the bad guys. And when they see this, this stuff in the political arena, it just, it, you know, it's really disappointing. Now, one of the other things you have to consider when you can look at all these attacks, if an FBI agent is called mm-hmm. in a trial to testify, that mm-hmm. lowers his or her credibility. Because you got all it this can. political stuff going on. and. Mm-hmm. You have all this news about the FBI being unreliable or being Mm -hmm. biased against one party or another that could be used against them and hurt the ability to try a case and get a responsible judgment. Right. Well, sure. Um, You know, any criminal defense attorney now is going to have something to latch on to. I mean, it could be a white collar crime case, you know, uh, a corporate fraud. Right. And the defense attorney could say, well, gosh, look at the history, the recent history of the FBI. How do we know this this particular FBI agent investigating my client, you know, didn't have some uh, political uh, motive or some personal motive to want to go after my client? You know, my client is so innocent. They can use that, you know, now. Um, so you're absolutely right. It certainly does um, very possibly uh, hurt uh, credibility when when it comes to important things like testifying like uh in, you know handing over a report um it, you know and you're supposed to trust what this agent has found and reported and it, you know it's it's a mess you see if you look at any police procedural on television mm-hmm. what happens an officer whether it's with police or fbi testifies the first thing they'll do is try to impeach that person now i wonder mm-hmm. if they'll simply say can we subpoena your email texts sure <laughs> and messages yeah, let's, just see where, let's just see what you were saying behind the scenes of course civil service laws i believe don't allow them to actually make appointments based on someone's private political beliefs you know as long as they keep it to themselves we got more to come with walter bosley Our guest or weekly co-host is J. Randall Murphy. You're in the Paracast. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have 
a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Heart-related health problems affect millions of people each year. Maybe you're one of the many who suffer from issues related to angina pain, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, unbalanced cholesterol, irregular heartbeat, or clogged arteries. There is a solution that doesn't involve expensive prescription drugs that only mask the problem and leave you with horrible side effects. If you are ready to live your life free of sickness, pain, and fear, live your life with increased vitality, energy, and youthfulness, and experience your body healing itself, then you're ready for heart and body extract from Healthy Hearts Club. Here is what one satisfied customer had to say about heart and body extract regarding his angina pain. I haven't had an angina pain since I've been on it. The heart body extract is just so great. I thank God that I was led to this product that's doing so much for me and that can do so much for other people. Call to order your two-month supply of heart and body extract today. Call 1-866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Aging is one thing that affects everyone. George has talked about the power of stem cells for years. Now, there's a new serum that harnesses that stem cell power to bring back your youthful look. Beverly Hills doctor, Nathan Newman. Stem cells are basically our fountain of youth. This is what maintains our body's uh, reparative regenerative abilities. As we age, every cell breaks down and has to be replaced, and what replaces it is the stem cell. Dr. Newman and Jeunesse have developed Luminess. Luminess takes the science of stem cells using the same growth factor complex that literally heals our cells, slowing the appearance of the aging process. Apply Luminous twice daily and on average, see results in a week. Learn more, watch our video, and order today at a special Coast website, healthylooking.com. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, that's healthylooking.com. Luminous for a healthier, much younger, better-looking you. Buy now at healthylooking.com. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I started fighting the IRS over 40 years ago when they tried to seize my mother's house. I sued the IRS and won. I beat the IRS then, and I've been beating them ever since. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I've helped thousands of people deal with tax problems they thought might never be solved. I can help you too. If you owe taxes you can't pay, don't wait another day. There's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com, danpilla.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So let's talk about the paranormal. In this respect, there have been rumors over the years of some level of FBI interest in ufos like the fbi had dossiers i'm using that term on georgia damsky contactees and stuff like that Mm -hmm. why would the fbi be concerned it doesn't seem to be anything that's part of their normal operations or am i wrong well no you're, you're you're right and you're wrong because you know we're talking particularly when you get into the the 1950s era of all this. Remember, we had just come off World War II in the prior decade. And by the 50s, we were neck deep in the Cold War. So um, a lot of people don't realize that the FBI's much larger mission is the national security mission. 
you know, they see the bank robberies and the white collar crime and the profiling of serial murders and the, what we call the crim side or the criminal investigative side of the house. That's the mostly what the public sees because the national security mission, you know, so much of it's classified that they don't realize that the, the great majority of the FBI budget goes to the national security stuff, which of course nowadays includes the counterterrorism. But in those days and in the days I was in, it was mostly counterintelligence, counterespionage, because when I was in the end of the Cold War and stuff, but in the 50s, it was the height of the Cold War. And remember, there's been a lot said and written and pointed out how the whole UFO thing could have been and was by some perceived as a Soviet psyop. Okay. And at that time, since there were those who were considering either it was a Soviet psyop or was this advanced Soviet military technology, therefore that makes it a national security issue. So when you're talking about now, um, UFOs and, uh, you know, the alleged contactees or the reported contactees on U.S. soil, um, that becomes as much the FBI's bailiwick as anyone. And by again, by the 50s, um, the Air Force OSI had only existed since 1948. So that would have been a logical uh, agency. And certainly, uh, I don't know the specifics, but certainly they were looking at it. But because it was a national security issue, that's why the FBI um, had kind of an obligation to look at these things. And um, remember also, they were, they were involved in operations during World War II. FBI agents would parachute behind enemy lines. Um, to my understanding, that's where the mafia came in and greatly helped the FBI. When you think about it, remember during the JFK era when Bobby was going after the mob before JFK was assassinated, obviously, you know, you have this uh, attitude where um, Hoover was almost, you know, saying mafia, what mafia kind of thing. And Bobby was wondering, hey, how come the bureau's not going after these guys? You know, it, it's my understanding and I'll express this as my opinion that probably one of the reasons Hoover didn't go after the mob was because they had helped us in World War II, you know, against fascist Italy and, of course, the Nazis by extension. With, with all this kind of stuff in the mix, I digress there with Hoover mafia thing, but it was in the 50s um, very much an FBI concern to at least, you know, be looking at. So, Well, the uh, yeah. Air Force has liaised with the FBI in the past, at, right at the beginning of the modern era of UFOs. Mm -hmm. For example, the, you know, the collections branch of the Air Force Office of Intelligence, their analysis was carried out in concert with mm -hmm. the FBI. Actually, the special agent S.W. Reynolds was his name. He was right involved in it. They had a, and th those people would do background checks and uh, in order to sort of clear right. witnesses and so on. So I, right. I could see how they could send somebody out to, say, check out Adamski and see what, he, you know, what was going right. on yeah. with him. And, and remember that the Air Force OSI's literal origin is with the FBI. When the Air Force wanted to create their own investigative agency, the FBI sent their, I think he was the number three man at the time. Carroll was his last name. And the FBI let go of him, let him go to the Air Force. He was made a brigadier general, and he was the first commander of the Air Force OSI. And he literally created the OSI on the FBI structure. This is why when I went from the FBI into the Air Force OSI, I felt very comfortable because a lot of just the way the offices and the way the organizations are set up is is FBI for the Air Force, essentially. But, yeah, it, the, the OSI and the FBI did have that. They've got that long tradition because it was literally um, an FBI agent from headquarters who uh, created the OSI structure for the Air Force. That's really interesting. Now, mm -hmm. I, I've been dying to ask you this question. We had Richard Doty on, of course. Mm -hmm. he, he says he was with the FOZ as well. And, yeah, uh, and that seems to be pretty much uh, without question now. But what about his claims that during his briefings and uh, introduction into the program that he was uh, inaugurated basically into the ranks of uh, – a sort of a secret UFO investigative group where there's literally hundreds of these agents around different places in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he, he talks about seeing films of UFOs and being uh, 
basically brought into the fold. Now, did you experience any of that? Or have you heard anything else from anyone else inside Fhazi other than Doty? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I was not personally uh, brought into any that, that would be like a task force or a special working group kind of thing. I, I was not brought into any specific thing like that regarding UFOs. I, I was brought into, there's an acronym that I used to never say because we, you know, we weren't really supposed to talk to, you know, you know, certain acronyms and stuff. But uh, in the last election, the SAP or the, you know, special access program, SAP, that's what I was in. And so what that means is you, you have a clearance where, you know, you have access to certain technology, you can be exposed to it, you know, and you get cleared for this stuff. It's called, we refer to it colloquially as cleared for weird. And he was for a while in the same operational program, SAP, that I was in, counter espionage operations. Okay. I was chief of the branch of counter espionage operations for OSI at Wright Patterson for three years. I find that really curious that mm -hmm. that you could be so closely related to that and not know mm -hmm. anything about it if it actually existed. Well, uh, are, are you saying it, it could be theoretically compartmentalized to the degree that oh, even you would yeah. not have known about it? Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, to, as far as Doty himself, yeah, he definitely was an OSI agent. He's not making that up because when I was in, there was a project that I was working on. And the uh, first time I heard about Doty, I was an OSI agent and his name was brought up by my supervisor as kind of a cautionary tale that something he had worked. Now, of course, now we know that it, what it involved, but I, I learned subsequently, you know, that it involved Benowitz and all that stuff. But at the time, this was in 94 or five, he was brought up to me as more, kind of a cautionary tale. So yes, to go back to what you're saying, Absolutely. If he was involved in that, it, I could totally see something like that being so compartmentalized that, sure. And even though I was cleared for weird and did what I did, absolutely there was stuff going on, I'm sure, that I didn't know about. We have to break here. We got Walter Bosley, Gene, and Randall. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Visit GCNlive.com today. Hi, I'm Patrick Kolbeck, and I'm running for governor. Time for some straight talk. I'm pro-God, pro-family, pro-life, and pro-constitutional carry. As an aerospace engineer, I like to fix things. We need to fix our roads, our schools, our auto insurance, our health care, and our tax policy. That's exactly what I will do if you elect me as your next governor. Principled solutions prioritize your best interests, not lobbyists. Paid for by Patrick Kolbeck for governor. Get the ultimate knife at an ultimate price. The Fox Karambit Knife. Finally available in the U.S. The Fox Karambit Knife opens with one hand. Faster than you can pull a handgun. For utility, for defense, and for way less than other knives of this caliber. Go to TheUltimateKnife.com. Truly the best knife you will ever own. And only available at TheUltimateKnife.com. Use promo code RADIO at checkout for free shipping. Get the ultimate knife at the ultimate price at TheUltimateKnife.com. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. Twin wildfires in Northern California have forced thousands of people to run, and more may have to. Governor Jerry Brown's been touring some of the burned-out areas and says he'd like some federal help. I've asked the president to make a major declaration. Uh, he's done it in the past. I'm uh, confident he'll do it again. A relatively rare tornado in New England. At least one woman was injured when the twister touched down in Webster, Massachusetts, toppling trees and damaging a number of homes in the city. Aaron Polito is the lieutenant governor in Massachusetts. We'll work with our uh, social service agencies to determine what the needs are so that these families uh, can take the next steps in partnership with the state and this community. You're listening to USA Radio News.
Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing at 800-605-6995. Immediately, that's 800-605-6995. Page Publishing is looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to them and give you their feedback. If they like what they read, they'll get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. They handle everything. Editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 800-605-6995 now for your free author submission kit. Again, for your free author submission kit, call 800-605-6995. That's 800-605-6995. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. Call Page Publishing at 800-605-6995 for your free author submission kit. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-261-9818 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-261-9818. Again, 800-261-9818. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. I would assume then, Walter, that you probably, mm-hmm. therefore, because things are compartmentalized, need to know and all that, mm-hmm. you probably yeah. were not written in on what Doty was doing. Remember, sure. Doty. He was not active in doing this stuff when I was in. Um, I don't know what he was doing, you know, specifically between 1994 and 99. But obviously the stuff he had done, I think, was was in the 80s and such. But the thing about here's the interesting thing about your clearances. You get read in, as they call it, and you get cleared to a certain level. Like I have TS, SCI, and then I have what we call tickets beyond that. and I'm. I'm not allowed to say how many tickets I have beyond SCI or within the SCI structure. Now that they talk about the SAP acronym publicly, yeah, I was beyond that. I was in a SAP. Now, what that means is you get read in to a certain level so that you can be, can be exposed to everything up to that level just in case you need to be. Okay. So that's why a lot of times when you hear guys talk about their clearance, they kind of don't qualify it. Um, I try to, I apologize if I've said it once and haven't qualified it, but I try to qualify and say, look, this was my clearance level. It doesn't mean you're read in on everything. So, you know, some folks like to say, oh, I had a high clearance. Well, it doesn't mean you, you, you knew as much as you're, you know, you want people to think you did. But, um, when I got my briefings, the way you're sitting there and the things they're, you know, cause they're showing you images and they're explaining things to you, um, in a way when you get to a certain level, you come away realizing, okay, what they just read me into was just general enough that they could fit, you know, um, anything in there. In other words, here's what I'm trying to say. You come away realizing you are actually cleared for more than, you know, you, you thought you were. Because as you learn more things, you realize, oh, okay, the way that works, the way that fits within the technology and the applications of these things and the systems, that fits this thing that I was briefed in on. Okay. That's why they do that. Because in your your day-to-day work, the course of your duties, you know, you're going to get exposed to specific um, 
programs, specific technologies, specific little things. And they want to make sure that they kind of across the board cleared you, you know, for that. Like if you get briefed in on something to do with satellite operations, okay, the way they brief it, it's classified with the, you know, the details are classified, but the way they brief it, um, any satellite stuff you would get uh, briefed in on or learn about after that um, up to your level is covered under what they told you about. Does that That's make really, sense? Yeah, that does make perfect sense, actually. Yeah. So uh, in terms of coordinating all of the intelligence, is mm-hmm. how high up do you have to go and how many people are there who coordinate the stuff that matters? I mean, it can't just go into some filing cabinet where nobody looks at it. There must be right. someone's, someone who says, okay, well, what do we do with all of this stuff? Oh, um, yeah, there is. How, how does that work? Well, for instance, the uh, OSI has something called the IOC, the Investigative Operations Center. And those are guys at, uh, you know, the OSI headquarters base. And they are just that. They are the Investigative Operations Center. When you're doing any kind of ops or, or any kind of investigation that requires operational activity, these are the guys at headquarters that they have all the pieces. Okay. You're out in the field, you're working the issue that you're working and it might it might have connection to somebody else's operation or somebody else's case or some other agency's activities well the 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 ioc the ioc they um you know they let you know what you need to know regarding that so if it's going to affect your activity um or if you need to not do this or if you need to do something in conjunction with another agency you know so just within the microcosm of the air force osi we have that. Okay. Now they'll work in conjunction with uh, Intel analysts at DIA because it's Air Force and, you know, Defense Intelligence Agency. Um, they'll also work with, um, they'll coordinate with CIA. Everything I did when I was at um, uh, Wright Patterson, when it came to the um, overseas, you know, the international foreign uh, soil aspects, we were, co- it had to be coordinated with CIA. Um, specifically what you know the kind of stuff we did in this specialty so um yes you have people at your own headquarters level at osi um also there was an aspect of what i did at right path that i was working with our guys at the pentagon almost daily so we had you know um analysts operational oversight um guys at the pentagon that um, I actually reported more to OSI headquarters in the Pentagon than I did my own commander. Interestingly enough, I was assigned to Detachment 101 at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and my commander, Lieutenant Colonel McDonough, would write my performance review, and he would give me, you know, local additional duty tasks, and I would do stuff for the detachment. But really, our discussions about my work was most of the time me going over to his office and informing him what we were up to. (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't me going and him saying, okay, you work on this case, you work on it. We didn't do that. It was me going over saying, well, this is what headquarters, this is what, you know, the program has us doing. So it was kind of a unique situation. That makes perfect <clears throat> sense, though. Yeah, uh, actually, so, when you so think we were always it. working with analysts and oversight, yeah. Okay, so then, of course, Wright Patterson, That's uh, that name's brought up quite a bit in, in mm-hmm. the ufology community. So oh, yeah. uh, did you have... Any exposure to any of that while you were there? Not as such. (laughs) And that's the way they do it. There obviously would be things you know that because Mm -hmm. of your commitments to your former employer, you couldn't reveal. Oh, of course. And I won't. All right. Um, So you may know all sorts of secrets that we'll never get a handle on until or unless you're able to overcome that pledge, as they say. What it is, is you get, I was certainly briefed in on certain technologies that could explain some, what, you know, the public perceives as UFOs. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, but, sure. That that would be uh, terrestrial technology. That'd be our own stuff, you know, secret yeah. aircraft, SR-71s or whatever. Yeah. And I've said, well, and other things, you know, I, I've yeah. said it before, you know, I think that, and people don't like to hear this, but, uh, you know, I think 90% of what, you know, most people look at and they think is a UFO from another world it is really um, uh, some type of classified technology, whether it's military or whether it's the private sector testing something, you know, that's proprietary. But um, 
you know, I, it, it's it's my opinion that that they a long time ago realized the best way to, for the government to have culpable deniability is to hand custodianship of whatever ET stuff, for example, um, over to a private contractor, you know, so that the government can say, oh, we're not we're not holding UFOs or any of this crash retrieval stuff. But, you know, the truth is a private contractor that they may have even set up and created for this purpose is holding that. And as a private contractor, that makes them a private corporation. And that makes what they have proprietary. Now, okay, wouldn't some not, of the now wouldn't some of the companies doing independent space flights, mm-hmm. SpaceX, etc., mm-hmm. be the ideal places to work with? What does Elon Musk know that he can't tell? I'm being maybe half right. facetious here, but based on right. what you say, Walter, that seems to make mm-hmm. a lot of sense. That sure. if you're going to choose a company to mm-hmm. take over this technology and mm-hmm. work with it, you'd pick a place that it already has earned their skills. And the Falcon 5 may be based on some secret government technology that we know nothing about. Or and Tesla. Is a Tesla developed from reverse-engineered alien technology? I'm getting a little bit excessive here but it's the time to break walter gene and randall you're in the parrot cast thank you for listening to gcn visit gcnlive.com today Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. If you like alkaline water or know someone that does, you're going to love the Dylan Living Water Bottle. It creates alkaline water on the go while reducing plastic waste and saving you money. Made with surgical-grade stainless steel, the Dylan Bottle increases the pH up to 9 to deliver both alkaline and antioxidant water anywhere you want it. Alkaline water is healthier, tastes better, and can even boost energy. The Dylan Bottle makes it easy and affordable to be healthy and achieve optimal hydration. Get your Dylan Bottle today at dyln.co. That's dyln.co. Hey, Dave, you in for golf this weekend? Oh, I can't. I promised I'd find a plumber to fix a sink and a painter to paint Just the... use Angie's List. Uh, doesn't that cost money? Not at all. It's free to find pros in your area who can do the work. You can even read ratings and reviews from other customers. What about roofing pros? Angie's List has pros for everything. And to save time, they'll even match you to the best pros for the job. Oh, that's awesome. Looks like I'll be able to play after all. Find the best pros for your next project at Angie'sList.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. 
But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Healthcare reform is confusing. With the loss of the Obamacare mandate, those needing help can now choose an affordable alternative. By joining Liberty HealthShare, you're part of a community of health-conscious Americans all over the country who control their own healthcare costs and choices. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of their medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We have Walter Bosley with J. Randall Murphy and Gene, and now I ask that question half seriously. But if we're picking private companies working with this technology, Mm-hmm. Any technologist, new developments, whether ours or reverse engineered, wouldn't a SpaceX or a similar company be an ideal candidate? Um, yeah, maybe yes, but probably no. I, you know, from my experience, uh, what you're going to have are the usual suspects, the major aerospace companies. Okay, they're going to have divisions that are their sensitive you know, well, their own version of a special access program within their company. It's probably going to be something more like that because those companies have been doing aerospace things a lot longer than Elon Musk, um, you know, guys like him or, or uh, Branson or whatever. And now where, where they could be useful would be in um, the perception management end of, you know, whatever would be, you know, being done with secret space technology. Okay. These guys would be useful for what they would want to, you know, the military, whatever, would want to project in the public psyche about what's going on. But uh, I I would think, you know, going back to that traditional military industrial complex, that's more likely the guys who are going to be creating this technology for the military. Okay. And the other thing is Elon Musk is a loose cannon. Let's face it. He can be kind of wacky. Yeah, they're very. And what we're talking about here, the the DOD, the military in general, and particularly the uh, Air Force, you know, they're very conservative in their security values, you might say. And so, the, yeah, exactly. They would rather go with uh, Boeing and the structure that they've set up for checking into people's backgrounds and, you know, the, the relationship they've had with a company like that over the decades than go with, you know, a guy like uh, Musk. As much as I encourage, like what Musk is doing, what Branson is doing, you know, I want to see the average person have access to space travel, ultimately. Yeah, but they're not going to get the same type of stuff that's going on inside, like no. a Lockheed, Lockheed Lab. Oh, no. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. But this is really interesting because it makes a perfect segue into up at that level of um, compartmentalization and secrecy. Mm-hmm. We can segue out into this idea that we've touched on before uh, here and in the forums about this sort of a, you've generically called it a breakaway civilization. Or Mm -hmm. when we got into it uh, in our discussions a little bit more, it's almost as if it's possible that this could be something that is not simply like, say, a separate civilization off in uh, bowels of Antarctica somewhere, but Mm -hmm. something that's almost integrated within our own structure to the point where it's invisible to the rest of us, almost like a parallel, maybe a parallel organization of types. So Mm -hmm. can you theorize or speculate or what types of things have led you to 
where's the connection between these people and the higher ups in our society and this uh, uh, theorized breakaway civilization? Well, like, you know, just like you just said, you know, it's all theory. Yeah. And, and I know I've written an entire, you know, one of my books is on, you know, this breakaway thing. So, it, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of all in there on that concept. Um, that's that's a fact. But still, it is it is a theory. And some people have this. I've, I've said this before. I'll keep saying it. There's a lot of people out there that have the idea that when they think of breakaway civilization, they or secret space program, but breakaway civilization, they think of these um, mysterious trillionaires who have um, like the Starfleet, these advanced, incredibly large ships, and they're living in um, these amazing bachelor mansions under domes on the moon or some other planet. And I, I just slap my forehead and just, oh, God. It's more like what you said. You know, these guys, they're a little more, no pun intended, down to earth. Uh, in their existence, um, you know, they're just people that um, have the sufficient means, you know, go back to Dolan's basic definition. And I'm just paraphrasing, but, you know, you're talking about people that have the sufficient means to develop and possess a technology um, independent of the rest of, you know, known civilization. Now, sure, it's very possible that this wasn't in, developed entirely independently when you're talking about anybody involved particularly with the military industrial complex. It's my opinion that our military industrial complex is itself a product of the Prussian slash German method of going around the world and exporting the German Prussian model of industry to use that new host country's resources to then build your own thing wherever you are in the world. Halmer shocked was doing this during the World War II era. Um, it was ac it's actually been a model since the medieval era of the Prussian states and the Prussian kingdom and stuff. So um, I see our military complex, in, excuse me, our military industrial complex as a product of that exact plan of exporting, you know, from the German model into a foreign country. I think this is what the Operation Paperclip guys were really up to. I think, you know, Operation Paperclip, they saw this, oh, here's how we get into the United States. We know Germany itself has its butt kicked. This war is over. But, you know, our thing can continue on. And, you know, when you look at how many of those Operation Paperclip, you know, Germans were involved in the building of our aerospace industry at that time and, and the military industrial complex, you know, um, there you go. And that's what I mean when I say, OK, they probably this theoretical breakaway. Um, they probably used our resources, our military, um, our companies to develop, you know, these breakaway technologies. So in that case, um, theoretically, it would be tied to our known industry, right? Our known companies. And these guys would, you know, they wouldn't live in domes on the moon. They, you know, they'd live where rich guys live, you know, in Rhode Island or Beverly Hills or, you know, wherever. In the Hamptons, you'll find people yes. who are part of the breakaway yes. civilization. So they're hiding in plain you sight. Might, yeah. They're not going to Antarctica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're here. Right. Yeah, that's my. That's what I think. And 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 like the secret space program, the technology. You know, no, folks. That there's not likely a Starship Enterprise, a fleet of Starship Enterprises. It's my opinion that um, a secret space program uh, vessel. Uh, most likely at this point is they're they're mostly, if not only, interplanetary, so to speak, and they they would look and operate pretty much like a, a navy submarine. When you think about it, the navies of the world that have had submarines for a hundred years now have been developing the same exact technology you would need for an interplanetary vessel. It's it's self-contained. It's it operates in a hostile environment, right? Um, there's got to be life support function on it. Um, you just take the, and I'm not the first guy to say this, you just take the concept of the submarine and you put it in space. And I think that's what, which implies also a smaller, you know, more, a little bit more realistic and rudimentary type of craft than, you know, the, what some of these people are proposing, like, again, the Starship Enterprise or the Corellian cruiser in Star Wars or whatever. Yes, but you're, what you're talking about here is it still has to be a place 
that can contain a crew for a very yes. long period of time. Years, maybe. Right. Uh, well, that depends on what propulsion systems they've developed, of course. Warp 7. Yeah, if they have some type of propulsion system that they've worked out that they can get to Mars in, you know, two weeks, well, okay, you know, that, that changes that game. And again, I, I say if. I know somebody out there is going to say, Bosley's saying they can get to Mars in two weeks just because, you know, they hate me or whatever and they want to say something. But, um, I, you know, I'm saying if they have this, um, you know, it, it it's not necessarily the model of, you know, it, it takes years to get somewhere. Uh, right. Uh, this is where, you know, when we say if, and, and it's fine to speculate, but this is where we tend to sort of step further and further and further out on the branch until well, we're we just have to ba- we're barely hanging on to a little, you know, kind of a twig at the end here. And, well, you, and you sort gotta, of my, my yeah, question here, process, yeah. my, my question here then would be, okay, so we've got these guys up at the top of the mm-hmm. uh, Fozzie that you were talking about in this central zone, the people with all the pieces who are responsible. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending on whichever group you're involved with, who are responsible for putting it all together and therefore know all about the people they brought over after the war in Germany, how they created the rocket program at White Sands. They know they provided them with all of the resources to do that. Yes. And therefore, they must know about this other program if there was such a thing that could get somebody to Mars in a couple of weeks. We've got more to come with Randall Jean. And Walter, you're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Standing up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. Raising our voices alone or together. Seeking the truth and speaking our minds. Not just making records, but breaking them. Fighting for victory on the battlefield and on the playing field. Seeing the world through new eyes and the earth from miles above. Redefining beauty, brains, and what it really means to be queen. Making ourselves heard on stage and on screen. Showing the way in Silicon Valley and showing up for others wherever help is needed most. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts, preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. But in looking at this here, are we thinking here that there may be some technology being developed that did come from some outside source that is not the breakaway civilization and not our normal Earth countries? It is my personal opinion that a small degree of that is is certainly possible. I'm 
Uh, I think so. Not to the extent that the uh, the people who love the the ET hypothesis and the UFO crash retrieval um, stories and, and legends would like it to be. But um, yeah, to some degree, certainly. To go back to what Randall was saying, though. Yeah, you know where I was going uh, with it, that, right? How could we not know that that's going on and then still be using comparatively outdated technology for, that costs billions of dollars when they must know about this other stuff? Well, and, here's, here's the thing on that. My, my position is this, and, and again, this is what I've looked at and what I've written and proposed. First of all, I don't think the secret space program technology is really that extensively far ahead of what the public knows about regarding space and military technology. Okay, I, I think it's sufficiently far enough ahead that, um, yeah, it would wow us some of it. But I, I think that it's not so sufficiently far ahead that we would perceive it as magic to, uh, you know, paraphrase the science fiction author. But here's the thing on who would know it. Remember, the Air Force OSI commander is only ever a brigadier general, a one star general. OK, and when you're talking about what we're talking about. Not everybody, a very small number of OSI would be aware of what you're saying certain people would have to be aware of. You can have people, this is the, the point of one of the products and reasons from compartmentalization. You can be working on something and really have no clue what it is you're actually ultimately a part of. Okay, you're doing your duty and you understand your task and the stuff you're not briefed in on is the bigger picture. So you have people that within the organization that are that maybe that would certainly be working on things connected to stuff they don't know about. And only a few people when you're talking about a secret space program, you know, you're not talking about a lot of people even within OSI that would be briefed in on that and know details about that. Okay. Now the other thing here is if there was alien technology some degree of it involved the point is here, we get a very small subset of it because some of it is so advanced, there's no easy way to Maybe. convert or understand. Unless it's a civilization yeah. on another planet where, for some reason, and we've seen this in sci-fi stories, they've stopped developing new technology. Or it's left there by their ancients, and they develop mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. That's a pretty good point. I mean, that we may not be dealing with technology exclusively like uh, ours. There may be some kind of, this is what I was trying to get at, is where's the line between, say, uh, uh, assuming that there might be some alien technology involved mm -hmm. and just really advanced technology of our own that only a few people know about. Right. And, and I would think that any space program, regardless of whether it's one we know about or we don't know about, is going to require a lot of infrastructure and support. So it's not like you can have two or three people build like a, you know, a mothership or something. It's just, right. it's just, you can't do it. Oh, no, it's, it's not going to be two or three, but, you know. No, you're going to need thousands <laughs> of people to do this. Well, okay, it, l l here, here's a hypothetical. Okay, remember what I said before about how an interplanetary vessel would probably be very much like a submarine. Okay, well, okay, let's take that model. Okay, folks, this is a speculation for those of you who hate when I speculate. No, I love it. Go get some coffee. Um, just no, you know, cool. plug your it. ears. Okay, here's the thing. You could have shipbuilders thinking they're building a U.S. naval submarine, okay, when actually that those parts they're building are going to be, uh, you know, they put it together even, and um, uh, the, the components, and I'm going to say why I say components here in a minute, Certain components are not in there because those components are classified, and those components actually turn that naval submarine into, for example, and this is remember, this is a speculation into an interplanetary vessel. Okay, so what these guys think they're building is, ooh, I'm working on this advanced submarine that the public doesn't know about. They think they're building a naval vessel that's going to be in the oceans, and what they don't know is they're actually building an interplanetary vessel. Now, the components that make it, you know, for space instead of the sea are plugged in later. One of the first things I did when I got to write Patterson was I, I have an AOR, an area of responsibility. It was a geographical area, several states. Okay. Yes, I was assigned to write Patterson, but I actually w was the guy for certain things 
um, for all Air Force installations in several states. It's a, little, it's a region of the U.S. And I, I did my tour of my area of responsibility. And one of the places I went to was Whiteman Air Force Base, and I got to go on a B-2 bomber, okay? And, you know, it was interesting. There's a bunch of holes in the dash, so to speak, <laughs> of the control, you know, and that's the classified stuff that gets plugged in. OK, so let's put that on steroids and say there's things that the guys working down at the shipyard building what they think is a secret U.S. naval submarine. There's things, you know, they're not going to be briefed in on. They don't know what those empty slots are going to be filled with. So that's just an example of how it could happen with known technology and the way they do things. And remember, guys, I went on that B2 in uh, 1996. OK, that's 22 years ago. So, you know, take it, take it forward 22 years. Again, um, the point is these things could be built um, in pieces, put together at another place or in space. These things could be built and the people building them are told it's A when it's actually Z. Uh, this is how it works. You know, that's, that's just the example that I would give for how you could have thousands of people actually working to, to build these things. And only a relative few, so to speak, know actually what it is and what it ultimately will be used for. Now, let's get back to the early years of the UFO field where a lot of that stuff was in the secret aircraft or weapons category. Now, mm -hmm. you mentioned something, Randall, about the cover of Kenneth Arnold's book about what supposedly is one of the craft that he saw. And you mentioned something about stealth technology. Do you recall? Right. Explain oh, to yeah. Walter about that. Oh, Walter probably already knows about uh, the evolution of stealth technology and how the, the early Horton brothers' designs mm -hmm. for the flying wing turned out to be almost perfect aeroforms for that. And, of course, being on a B-2, the wingspan for that was uh, the same as uh, the YB-47. You know, So, mm -hmm. you know, they came out of Northrop technology. Right. So it, it's something that's, that was developed here on Earth. We don't really need to invoke aliens for, for any of that. So that's right. the Kenneth Arnold sighting. May have been test aircraft of some sort. It could have been, but then all of the records that we can find from back there say that that's really not what was going on. They weren't testing any of those. They weren't even, you know, they weren't building any, and there weren't any in the area at the time. And they weren't uh, capable of the kind of performance that he said what he saw exhibited. Mm -hmm. Of course, you see, the, that's also the entire, the entire foundation of this case depends on Kenneth Arnold estimating the speed for what, 12 to 1500 miles an hour. This is 1947. If he overestimated, maybe it was 800 miles an hour, maybe it was six, whatever. Right. It brings you closer to the possibility it was a secret aircraft. And that's what so many of these sightings, the UFO sightings in the early years, the early years of the flying saucer mystery, were probably yeah. mostly test aircraft. So when Jim Mosley, half seriously in those days with the original Nexus and Saucer News, said mm -hmm. they were from Earth, secret weapons test aircraft he called it the earth theory very likely jim was correct i mentioned this by the way jim's birthday was august 4th you'll hear this on august 5th more to come with gene randall and walter you're in the paracast <laughs> Neighbors, we've made such a deal with HelloFresh, and it means that everyone listening to this show can receive $30 off your first week of deliveries when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code PARACAST30. You know, with HelloFresh, you can choose the delivery day that works best for you. They've got a wide variety of chef-curated recipes that change weekly. And can you imagine me cooking Japanese panko chicken. It makes me feel like I'm a chef. It means also that you could actually get your meal cooked in 30 minutes. For busy people, this is perfect. The simple recipes 
includes step-by-step instructions so even I can figure it out. Go to HelloFresh.com, use the offer code PARACAST30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. HelloFresh.com. Long distance travel or long hours in front of a computer can take its toll on your body. Get relief for your neck or back pain when you search Amazon for sunshine pillows, heating wraps, and pads, often listed as an Amazon choice. Why take another pill? Now, from Sunny Bay and by customer demand, we introduce our extra-long neck heating wrap, a complete wrap, wide and hands-free, and brings fast relief to those who suffer from neck or back pain. You can easily find sunshine pillows on Amazon. Or search Amazon for our new Sunny Bay disposable heat pads. Or look for Sunny Bay heated neck wraps for relief from back pain to menstrual pain and cramps. Sometimes life can be a pain in the neck or back or shoulder. See why our company, Biomed DB Design, has a lifetime 100% positive rating on both Amazon and Etsy. Just go to Amazon.com and search Sunny Bay or call us 253-678-1361. Get the ultimate knife at an ultimate price. The Fox Karambit Knife. Finally available in the U.S. The Fox Karambit Knife opens with one hand. Faster than you can pull a handgun. For utility, for defense, and for way less than other knives of this caliber. Go to TheUltimateKnife.com. Truly the best knife you will ever own. And only available at TheUltimateKnife.com. Use promo code RADIO at checkout for free shipping. Get the ultimate knife at the ultimate price. At TheUltimateKnife.com. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. If you're young and healthy, you don't need life insurance, right? Yeah, that's what I used to think, too, until my brother died at 38. Joe left his wife with two kids, a mortgage, and a stack of bills she couldn't pay. Mary had to sell the house and move everybody into this tiny two-bedroom apartment just to make ends meet. I never want to do that to my wife, so I got life insurance. I called AIG Direct and was really surprised how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. Listen, if you have a family, you should seriously think about getting life insurance. You'll feel a lot better having it. Trust me. Call AIG Direct for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you could save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-910-7981. That's 1-800-910-7981. 1-800-910-7981. Homemakers. Groceries by mail ships free. Try our amazing bacon. It stores in your pantry. No refrigeration required. Our value-added packaging provides a 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Always price less than grocery for your everyday use. Savory and delicious. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Shall we continue? Absolutely. Actually, sure. yeah. The, the Arnold sighting, that, that was a really good one. And you know, it could they could have been test aircraft strictly speaking the the definition of a ufo excludes unidentified aircraft from the definition so they really shouldn't have been classified as ufos in the first place or we wouldn't have classified them as ufos later so you know they were unusual they moved a lot like some sort of an aircraft would they didn't suddenly change direction and go the opposite way for example yeah it's possible that what Arnold saw it was just some kind of aircraft. And the pinpoint turns could have been exaggerated. You know, mm-hmm. we're talking about human perception. We're talking with the mm-hmm. fact that flying saucers very quickly became cultural icons. So the characteristics may be repeated in other aircraft to a more normal, mundane degree, but still fairly quickly. And people say, pinpoint turns. Yes, of course. We saw one of them. You know, in my, which I've recently admitted to this, I guess you'd say it or, or talk about it a little bit. I don't go into detail on it. But my sighting I had in uh, December of 2014, 
as far as my description of it, I acknowledge that where I'm pretty sure I have it wrong is the trying to get the exact um, altitude. It, it was low. You know, we're talking 50 to 75 feet uh, above ground was all. But, you know, I could be off. I, I It could have been 100 feet, you know. So when you think of Kenneth Arnold's, you know, the, the specifics, yeah, I totally see where some of it he could have exaggerated or been off with what he was saying. Now, the thing is, Arnold was a pilot. I am not. OK, even though, you know, I've been in a profession where, you know, observation skills are very important and, and I have them and stuff. But you're talking about a flying object. You know, Kenneth Arnold was a pilot. So I, I would say that the actuality was somewhere between what he was saying and um, maybe just a little bit off because, you know, it's not like he was a milk truck driver. OK, or uh, a postman out there that, that's know. fair comment for sure yeah actually walter i'd love to hear you tell us about your sighting because i don't actually recall ever hearing I've you talk about, about it, it. yeah tell I've us only, about it I, i've only it, it you know I'll, I'll be honest with you i have a reluctance because you know there's going to be people out there say oh he's making it up oh you know because he wants it but you, you know whatever um well, i have video of it and i've shared that video and the images with individuals you know like right after it happened so um uh, it 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 happened it can't be any I, crazier than than uh, the uh, the types of experiences i've had or a number of other people so and i i freely admit to having seen some pretty strange stuff so. it, it didn't it 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 didn't do any crazy maneuvers in fact it was very uh uh what's the word very very tame it it was moving along um you know not fast um, it, it, it maintained its attitude and its altitude. Um, and, uh, you know, it paused for uh, a few moments and then continued on under the same, definitely under some type of control, like, you know, could have been a, some type of drone technology or something. I don't know, but at one point, um, it was, uh, dumping, um, material you know, a molten type of material of the side. I contacted Jacques Vallée in December and I have the email. He expressed, um, you know, some serious interest in it and uh, haven't had the opportunity yet to um, discuss it further with him. Um, but uh, was this it, at night or like? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It oh, was, so it was a it light was, of some kind. It was around um, between 1130 and midnight, I think. So, and. I can imagine the skeptics like I'm not saying yeah. you didn't see something unusual, but, you know, what would you say to someone who said, well, you're, are you sure it couldn't have been like some kind of a, a flare on a balloon that was, you, oh. know, <laughs> you know, dripping yeah. hot, hot, you know, yeah. Hot. yeah, I I thought of that. I considered that. I, I told myself, OK, because I had someone with me. The person that lives at the house was coming in from work and came in and said, you got oh, my gosh, come out here and look at this. And uh you know, I went out there and holy smokes. And then it, uh, you know, it, it, it continued, you know, moving after a few minutes, I had time to run in and get the camera and uh, it was, it was just staying in, in one spot. And I went in, got the camera, I started, you know, rolling video and then it continued moving on probably within about 30 seconds of me rolling the video and, you know, yeah, there was kind disappear? of some low overcast. Well, there was low overcast and it went in the direction it was going. It eventually disappeared into the, that overcast, the clouds. I hit the screen. I'm still with you guys, right? Oh yeah. Okay. I, can hear you I, 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 I hit the screen on my uh, thing here and, and okay. Ah, did it again. Got to keep my hands away from that. Well, thanks so, for sharing um, that. Yeah, that's it. And I know I'm going to catch all sorts of crap and hell from some people, but you know what? scrum it happened <laughs> and you had some sort of an impression then that this wasn't just something mundane right it, it, well the first thing i thought was chinese lantern right right i thought okay okay and so i immediately reviewed what you know chinese lantern characteristics how they move this was not moving at all like a chinese lantern okay this was something that was not not that i even said to you know the first 
a person I confided in with this and something. I said, I said, okay, am I seeing some type of fancy Chinese lantern here? And I'm mistaking it for something else. And the person looked at it. They, they said, no, I do not think at all that, you know, Chinese lantern. Um, so, you know, I, cause my first thought is, okay, Walter, you know, don't get excited. Don't turn this into something that it's not. And well, you know, you see, it's almost four years ago that it happened. And I'm just now this year, you know, talking about it publicly because psh, I didn't know what to think. Um, How far away I, was it? Do you figure? Do you, you know, was it too far, or in a in a situation well, it, at, at, you couldn't one, get out and follow it, or something like? In, when, in order when to try I to... when I um, came out of the house, it was like right above the fence line between my house and my neighbor's house, and it was probably I'm going to guess somewhere between fifty to seventy five feet in the air no more than that it must have been a small object then uh well no you got to figure at 50 to 75 feet above at the the size that my uh, our eyes were seeing you know it could have been yeah not large yeah i would agree with you not large but it could have been uh, i've estimated like maybe 15 feet in across what's that diameter yeah and uh you know Oh, that would still be, that would mean your fence would have to be fairly far away then. Uh, that, that's just an estimate. Um, right. I'm more confident with the altitude than I am the size of the object. So, right. You know. Okay, we're going to split for a few seconds and continue with this discussion. Mm-hmm. Randall has many thousands and millions of questions to ask you, and I bet sure. this will be an active discussion in the forums. In any case. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah we got Walter Bosley with us. J. Randall Murphy is our weekly co-host. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Are you afraid to go to the mailbox because of letter after letter from the IRS? Are they stacking on more and more penalties and interest? By now, you know the problem won't go away on its own. Don't let the IRS chase you to your grave with penalties and interest and liens and levies. You need real help now. I'm Dan Pilla. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I help thousands of people solve tax problems they thought couldn't be solved. I can help you too. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com, danpilla.com. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. Firefighters in California are doing their best to help protect people and their property. USA Radio's Tim Berg reports. More than 10,000 firefighters are continuing to fight wildfires in Northern California and Southern Oregon. As evacuation orders continue to come in across both states, firefighters say they do what they can to save people's homes. When we see people's property, uh, be it a house, a car, old trailers or whatever, that's that's somebody's possessions. For USA Radio News, I'm Tim Berg. Cal Fire's Ken Pimlot says battles are still raging with high winds and low humidity, making things even more dangerous for the crews. We have burned over 450,000 uh, acres. Uh, today, over 40,000 residents remain evacuated uh, in various places in California. You're listening to USA Radio News. Money, money, money money you gotta have it when you need it what do you do if you don't have a rich uncle call lending tree with us hundreds of banks compete for your business so you'll get loans with competitive interest rates and in some cases with no closing costs so here's the deal if you need money call us do you want to refinance your current loan are you 62 or older and interested in a reverse mortgage then call lending tree now 800-634-1315 800-634-1315. We've closed over $250 billion in loans. We know what we're doing and can help you. Call right now for a free quote. 
That's 800-634-1315. NMLS number 1136. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper, article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with Reputation. ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. This is Robert Hastings, author of UFOs and Nukes, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We don't want to tell you about the stuff on the cutting room floor, ladies and gentlemen. Walter Bosley, there's not much. J. Randall Murphy, Gene Steinberg. Randall, you had a question of Walter. Well, actually, I'm really uh, grateful that you decided to share that with with us, Walter, because yeah, I, I didn't plan on doing that. You I guys. always find it interesting <laughs> to hear people's stories. It's just they never cease to fascinate me, regardless of what they were, especially when someone like yourself who knows about all the things that they could be besides something alien and doesn't jump to, oh my God, flying saucer and thinks first, well, what else could it be? And then you they're still to. left with an impression that it's something uh, rather unusual. Again, I go back to, you, you could ask the question, was it a Chinese lantern or some type of thing? If it was some type of Chinese lantern thing, it, it was connected possibly to a drone because the way it moved, Chinese lanterns do that. Once you let them go, they kind of do their own thing depending upon the wind, right? And generally, generally they go kind of in a straight up or like a balloon, you know, when a kid's balloon, you let go of it, it kind of does that thing where it's going up, but it's moving and it's kind of perky jerky and, and not smooth. This was definitely not doing that. So the most rational explanation would be if it's a Chinese lantern, it was somebody rigged it up to some type of possibly some drone thing. And uh, if that's the case, that was pretty cool. It made a great UFO. Um, or if you know, was it some other type of thing that, you know, somebody constructed and uh, I and the person who saw it with me, my adopted kid's uh, boyfriend, were we just kind of in awe, like, ooh, ah, uh, because it was, you know, kind of weird and cool at the same time. Um, but it had a very down to earth explanation. I don't know. You know, you have to look at all the factors involved. And for me, all the factors involved. I still come away thinking, okay, this was something uh, very possibly um, in the weird um, or extraordinary, so to speak, or out of the ordinary, let's say out of the ordinary um, category. And, oh, sure. Uh, you know, um, yeah. and I'm glad that I got video of it. Now, here's the thing, though. Greg Bishop and I have talked about this uh, at times, and he's talked about it with others. Um, the thing on the video, what sucks about the video is it looks farther away. And it's not as clear as what our eyes were seeing. And, you know, Greg Bishop and I have talked about how, you know, these things that happens to a lot of people, they, when they do have their cameras, they try to get imagery. And then when they look at what they got, they're like, what the heck? This thing was closer. And what we were, we were seeing this a lot clearer than the cameras picking up. And so you can't go to the video and say, there it is, the definitive in clear focus, exactly what we saw. So you got to ask yourself, Okay, other than the, well, no, it could be the advanced technology could have some type of jammer, so to speak, just for lack of a better term, some type of thing that messes with electronic recording devices is my point, is what Greg and I and others have talked about. What Did this have that? Possibly. I, I don't know. 
Um, all I know for a fact is, is that I and the, uh, the kid's boyfriend stood out there in the driveway at that time on that date. And we saw this thing in the sky and I got some photo and video of it. And the experience and the video was sufficient enough that Jacques Vallée said, wow, this is really interesting. I'm interested in this. Is um, there we'll anything talk. there you'd care to show us in the photos and video? I can, I can send you. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can send it to you. I don't care. Can we post it in the forums? Cool. Uh, I'm asking for a lot of uh, crap from people. No, no I understand it, that. Know, that's, that's and that's, the forums. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll send you, I'll send you one of the stills, but you know, all you're going to see is a, a spot of light. I really, I really, to me, the value of the imagery is that by gosh, don't call me a liar that I didn't see this thing because, you know, here it is. Uh, okay, I, the point being here that if we, put, if we put that in the Paracast forums, it's just a light. So it is no sense. Yeah, that's right. And the video is the same thing, just a light in the sky? The video is pretty much, I mean, I don't, I'll show it to you, you know, it, privately, you know, so you can see. I don't want to do a Ray Stanford, so... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not about to yeah. race Stanford. I'm talking about this sighting. I told you I got imagery. I'll let you see the imagery. And if you decide you don't want to put it in the forum because it's not definitive, that's your choice. But uh, I'm not about to when I have something like that because it's not definitive. You know, well, and, the, and knowing you know, that is fine. Mm-hmm. You see, my view is that okay. Well, we've heard your story about what you saw. Now, if we can see the video, we can say, well, yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, what we've got is a situation where you're looking at one thing and getting an impression that is mm-hmm. entirely different than what's coming out on film. Yeah. And that alone is actually really interesting to a oh, researcher who can be objective about it. Oh, so it's you, fascinating. When, so when, you, you get, yeah. when you get into the, the really, let's go out into purple land here with what UFOs might really be about. And it's the reason why I'm not so turned on by the ET thing anymore. Um, I, I do think there are extraterrestrials. Yes, I do think they have, and they continue to come here. I have no problem with that. I think they do. Anybody who says, no, 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 it's like, okay, you're a stick in the mud. Get, get lost. But uh, I, So I'm with the ET people in the basic idea that, of course, they exist. Yes, they've come here. Yes, they're still coming here. But there are aspects of the, the UFO phenomenon on the whole, the greater that, you know, Technology explains a lot of it. ET explains some of it, but there's that other zone where there's some wild stuff going on. And what you said, like, you know, we're standing there when I first saw this thing, because again, I go back to my professional roots and, and as an observer, I, before I said anything about what I was seeing, I asked Ken, I said, describe to me what you are looking at right now. And he described it physically. And it was exactly what I was seeing too. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And so I I knew, okay, we got to do that. We got to get that established. But you're right. Here's this thing that on video, it just looks like a blurb of light. Okay. Dropping another blurb of light. Okay. But what our eyes were seeing was much more in focus and closer. And, you know, thinking, wow, okay. Is this one of those things where they're they're, They mess with your perceptions. You know, the other thing here is this has been true with ufo sightings from day one most of the photos out there are just blurry just lights in the sky they are totally (laughs) useless and then you get a couple a handful how many really good ufo photos out there are so so clear and distinct that they show something the problem with that is okay maybe they were faked because that's what you'd get something very clear. And even if they weren't faked, how do you know that someone wasn't messing with you? Right. Yeah, exactly. Look, here's the thing. I'm going to say this. If someone in my neighborhood came to me, you know, said, Hey man, I got to confess. Here's what you saw. I put this and they demonstrated it for me. I'd be laughing my ass off. I'd be saying, Oh man, you had, we were, we were totally blown away. We didn't know what the heck we were looking at. That's cool. Well, yeah. That would be worth yeah. a show. That would be worth a show. Let's bring on somebody sure. who actually yeah. hoaxed a you UFO. Know, I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't piss me off. I wouldn't, you know, try to hide that. I, I, you know, I, I'm not saying I saw something from another world. I saw literally an unidentified flying object 
And it was kind of cool how it all worked out. Frustrating too, um, because, but here's the thing I come away with. Um, and I never mocked people who claim to have seen UFOs. I've never done that. Okay. Um, you know, uh, but I can understand even better now how frustrated they are when people, A, call them liars, B, say that they were, you know, faking what they got on film, you know, um, because it's frustrating. The thing you get is not clear. Um, you know, the, the, you get people that just because they don't like you personally, let's face it. That's what we got in any community when you're dealing with people. You know, and we have it in the UFO paranormal community. A lot of stuff that goes on with questioning people and stuff is because somebody doesn't like another guy personally. I want to bring up something about that in our next segment with Walter Bosley, Jay Randall Murphy, our weekly co host. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. If you like alkaline water or know someone that does, you're going to love the Dillon Living Water Bottle. It creates alkaline water on the go while reducing plastic waste and saving you money. Made with surgical grade stainless steel, the Dillon Bottle increases the pH up to 9 to deliver both alkaline and antioxidant water anywhere you want it. Alkaline water is healthier, tastes better, and can even boost energy. The Dillon Bottle makes it easy and affordable to be healthy and achieve optimal hydration. Get your Dillon Bottle today at dyln.co. That's dyln.co. Are you retired or facing retirement and you're afraid your income is going to be less than you'd like? I'm Pharmacist Keith. Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and I want to show you a low-cost way to create your own business, working around your current schedule, creating extra income that will last for years to come by joining Dr. Wallach's crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com, or call 866-257-3105 for a recorded message. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-261-9818 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-261-9818. Again, 800-261-9818. Angie's List has collected millions of verified reviews of local home service providers, and now they're free for everyone to read. 
Angie's List makes it easy for you to find top quality service providers in your area for any type of home project. Search for a great pro in your area or let Angie's List instantly match you to a few who can do the job. To get the most reviews from real customers all for free, go to Angie'sList.com today. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from PresidentialUFO.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Now, briefly here, or though it can be mm-hmm. less brief, but let's get into it because you mentioned it. You jumped into mm-hmm. it. And that was, mm-hmm. you mentioned the concern here. What if I put this in the forum and that's going to maybe mm-hmm. open a can of worms? And you wonder here yeah. why this nonsense happens in any forum. Because I know there are some other forums they've been trying to poach members from Mars saying, we are friendlier. Yeah, but when you get active and when you have a lot of people with different opinions, very strong opinions, the problem with the online world is you can hide behind your keyboard or your uh, yeah, touchpad. It's, it's so anonymous that... The downside of human nature is easy to express. And you can become something other than what you are. Now, Randall came mm. to our forum as ufology originally, right? Right. Right. Now, of but course, I didn't hide my identity. No. I had my website on there and I've got my own bio on there. And just mm. like, you know, Walter, none of us in this conversation is hiding who we are. And I, for example, always came on as Gene Steinberg. I said, why do I need some dumb name? This is who I am, for better or worse. I am a member of one forum, though, that caters to people interested in web hosting and web technologies as Captain Marvel. And that's even more confusing (laughs) because there are two Captain Marvels. There is the Marvel Mm -hmm. Comics version, who's a woman, and the original Uh Shazam version, going back to 1939, that competed with Superman. And I mentioned that one and picked it because I kind of think that the first Captain Marvel movie in 1941 had some of the best flying scenes until, say, the 70s or 78 Superman. Even then, I I could see through them, really. This one featured Tom Tyler, a B-Western star who also played the mummy, you know, Karis the mummy. And he looked like Captain Marvel, just like Zachary Levi is now playing Shazam, and he bulked himself up with muscles. And some of he's got real muscles. Most Mm -hmm. of what you see in the costume is real muscles, and he looks like the classic Shazam character. You were saying? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, um, uh, but there are guys in the forum who, you know, and I got a lot more respect for, you know, like uh, Thomas Morrison, okay? You know who he is. His name is there. You can go look up his stuff as an artist. You can see his face. You know, he, he he and I have disagreed on stuff and exchanged barbs and stuff. At least I know the guy's name. I know who he is. And it, it's really the ones who, you know, have these. Uh, it's just a first name moniker and you never see their face. They never it, it's it's easy for people to take the uh, cheap shots when they're being anonymous. And, you know, you, you have to at some point adopt a sense of humor and ignore most of that. You probably um, know the person I'm talking about. He's no longer in the forums for a thousand yeah. reasons I don't want to get into here. And he right. wants to look and try to prove that the credentials you present that show who you are mm-hmm. are faked. That right. looks to be his life's mission. Wait, still? Yes. He was hitting me with this a few months ago, and then what he said is, I should give up everything because I got all these, I've got a handful of what we call stalkers after me. And they've been using my reverses, my life's reverses as ammunition to attack me. You know, this is, you know, you kick somebody when they're dead. Yeah, people get into, you know, remember, that's why you got to be careful with making that stuff public is because you kind of, you know, when you got to be careful in general, I'm speaking, people got to be careful what they make public because then people are going to use it, whether it's, it's so to speak fair or not. But, I understand uh, that in my situation, but what they do is they, 
they go ahead and say, let's look at all the court records. Maybe he was evicted from his apartment five years ago. Let's create a conspiracy yeah. about that. Maybe, maybe somebody tried mm-hmm. to collect a debt from him 20 years ago, which happens to a yeah. lot of people. And, oh, we're going to make a big issue of that. Yeah, but what about the other yeah. 14 million people uh, yeah, <laughs> it yeah, happened it's, to? It's big, yeah, exactly. It becomes a big, nasty monster. And some people, again, if somebody doesn't like you particularly, or me or whoever, Jay Randall, for a reason, they're going to give them the opportunity and they're going to you know, do what they can. Like somebody trying to say that my credentials are fake, good luck. <laughs> you know, no, that's it, what it makes you such an interesting guest, actually, is because your credentials aren't fake. You can tell us about lots of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with trying to verify people's credentials. Oh, you know, that, we've got- uh, uh, when you have a guy like me tell a host, he's going to go on a show and he tells a host, so I'm this, that, the other. The host, I've said this, the host needs to be asking for the DD-214. I gladly, you know, show mine to whoever needs to see it. And, you know, I the guys who say my credentials are fake, you know, tell them to ask Don Acker, Greg Bishop, Kevin Smith is no longer with us. But, um, you know, and, and they can do a, if they're a U.S. citizen, they can do a uh, FOIA search if they want. You know, um, you can actually look up that on the Internet. Now, I did that not too long ago and uh, was able to bring up uh, records for I'm pretty sure it was Doty. Just yeah, right off, I mean, straight off. the now, net. Now I like to joke. I like to say, yeah, OSI might not be happy about. Oh, yeah, that damn Bosley. Yeah, he was one of us. That, that guy, you know, <laughs> or the FBI. Oh, they, they might roll their eyes and say, oh, that Walter. But oh, well, you you're know, retired now from there. That aren't um, you? I, I'm not officially retired from any because i worked for three different organizations over the course of uh, 18 years and so i was never with anyone i don't get a pension i don't have a retirement pension from uh, air force fbi or anyone else i'm i'm out here like all all you other guys just kind of hanging in the wind were you a salaried employee or an independent contractor I was a salaried um, uh, uh, fbi salaried employee in fact i've shown uh, i have one of my pay stubs FBI pay stubs. I was a GS salaried employee of the FBI. Carried a credential like agents do, but without the badge. Yes, but the, the question FBI. being here is you would not qualify for a pension under civil service because, laws? Because I didn't work for them for 20 years. Ah. I left them and went into the Air Force. See, honestly, I think there's about like a thousand bucks or something that accrued for my retirement pay, so to speak, that when I reach 65 or whatever, they'll probably cut me a check and that's it. <laughs> you know, if that much, uh, the air force, I was only with them for, you know, the six years. And yeah, of course I was a, my badge number was 1911, 1911. That was uh, a very good that. year. That was the year my mother was born. So I like oh, that. year. But the, but the question would be here, you work mm-hmm. for the United States of America with different agencies. Yeah. Wouldn't it yeah. be nice, of course, this is something for the politicians, to say, yeah. hey, this guy gave all these years for God and country, yes. but he worked for different agencies. Why yes. can't he have one pension for his total service? You know, it's like working exactly. for a division of a company. If I work for Apple and I'm developing the next operating system, then I move on to build iPhones. I'm designing iPhones. Yeah. And the next one, maybe I'm head of customer support. But I worked for Apple for 20 years, whatever their pension yeah. is. And Apple, of course, could you know buy two or three countries with the money they have now. <laughs> you, would think, you would think that the spook world, the intelligence community, would have something like that. Because there's a lot of guys like me who went from this organization to that. And yet they did their 18, 20, 30, you know, 40 years. You would think that they would have something like that in the world I worked in for that reason. Because you do you know, move from one organization to another. Um, but they don't. And um, I knew that, you know, as I did it, as I progressed through my career. You're and doing it, uh, private mm-hmm. investigating. Yeah, I'm a licensed PI, yes. Yeah. So That sounds like it could be pretty interesting. Or is it as gl- not as glamorous as it's made to it's be? It's not TV. as glamorous <laughs> as you think. It's, uh, I, I'm a surveillance specialist. Um, and so I most often provide um surveillance uh services for other pis like if they're working on a case they need a surveillance i'll either you know 
kind of manage the surveillance team or I'll just do it all myself for them. And so I'm kind of subcontracted to another PI. Yeah, I have to have a 401k or something. In I have order a 401k, yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Well, they'll take that away yeah. from oh, you yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I have that. Yeah. They'll take that away from you too. They're trying to take away everything. So oh, that's, oh, gonna, that's, sure. that's going to go. Hey, listen, mm, let me great. just mention this real quickly here. We have mm-hmm. the Paracast Plus at plus.thepowercast.com where you get a version of the mm-hmm. show free of the network ads, free of the network ads, so it satisfies the people who complain on YouTube. As people want to mm-hmm. complain, they're always going to find a way, the After the Paracast podcast, and more stuff's being designed. So we've got Walter Bosley with a fascinating life. And this could be a lot of fun in the forums. I'll tell you that. J. Randall Murphy, <laughs> so Gene Steinberg. Oh, we're just going to drag you into it, my friend. But I like him. He's a nice guy. That's why I bring him on. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.thepowercast.com, store.thepowercast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.thepowercast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home, and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-667-9035. 800-667-9035. That's 800-667-9035. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Okay, so I admit it. I like Randall. I don't always agree with Randall. We've argued in the forums. And Walter, he's a lot of fun, so we're happy to have him around. But the thing that we always bring here is let's disagree and be friends. It's like Barry Goldwater and Walter Mondale, the conservative, the liberal, going on TV shows in the final years of their lives perfectly decent friends and they simply debate politics from different points of view why can't we have that anymore that's what makes the forums so good in my opinion is that it is very free and open you know you mentioned the forum that was trying to uh, poach our members i went over there to see what it was all about and i lasted about two days before they banned me for not agreeing with their politics on things in the ufo community yeah right now there's a uh a sickness going around out there and it's bad because of the people that are on the two ends or lean, you know, or, or near the two ends of the spectrum and everybody that's in between, whether they lean one way or another, the people that are kind of in between that are trying to be sane and, and civil, you know, we're, we're we get caught up in it, you know, um, yeah. it's kind of old, 
and stale. It's uh, it, it just I could go on with all sorts of derogatory uh, assessments. Well, let's of let's it. not do that. Let's try something no. completely different here. Mm-hmm. We've got a question on our forum for you, okay. and this has to do with this uh, whole uh, latitude thirty three thing, oh, which okay. uh, we want you to talk a bit more about. This is from Ken Kanakaris is what he goes by. Okay. One of our paranormal adepts on the site and asks, uh, do you think that something similar to the Latitude 33 that you talked about could be found in the Disney world or Euro Disney? So uh, uh, how about an introduction mm-hmm. to all that? And then maybe we can get back to that question. My first nonfiction book was Latitude 33, Key to the Kingdom, in which I presented a theory and a, my analysis of um, the what I refer to as the esoteric engineering of the original Disneyland in Anaheim. And the book goes into all the details with that and the who and the why and the how. And uh, it involves the telluric current, which is an actual, it's an ELF, an extreme low frequency that does run through the planet. Um, it's probably the world grid, so to speak, that Tesla was talking about telegraphy since the days of the uh, building of the railroads in the 1850s, 1860s, uh, telegraphy has been tapped into this telluric current, you know, for now, you know, over 150 years. And so it's an actual real scientific thing, the telluric current stuff. Now, if this explains the world grid, the theory in my Latitude 33 book, again, theory, big, big speculation, was that the park was built on the intersection of three of these tiller currents it theoretically has served the great success of the original disneyland so um it would make sense that if they were back in 1969 70 when they were building disney world that they might try to repeat that the guy who was who i identify as being responsible for that had not been associated with disney for mm, i think over 10 years by the time disney world was built the guy, my guy who identifies where these telluric currents run, I'd have to look at the map. But yeah, there is telluric current running through the area of Disney World. There's not like an intersection of three lines like there is theoretically at Disneyland, according to him and according to my book. So I do not think the same kind of thing was attempted at Disney World. It doesn't mean it wasn't. I just I just don't think that it was, or if it was, it wasn't the original guys, you know, so it was kind of maybe a kind of a a weak or kind of not fully realized attempt. Um, But certainly it could be, you know, but I, again, my focus was Disneyland, the original one in Anaheim, California, and a little bit looking at Disney World because of just generally the stuff in Florida as regards the Tulare current and the theoretical stuff. I've been to both. Of mm-hmm. course, I wasn't sucked in, but nowadays I couldn't afford it. <laughs> I mean, they, this yeah. is supposed to be something for kids. And I know. Walt Disney was such a family man. And they've made these yeah. things so expensive. Yeah. That you have yeah, to spend a week's salary. Yeah, it's pathetic. Yeah. What can we say about that? It's just, that's just awful. And um, it's the way it is, though. That's the way it is. It's not just the magic kingdom. It's the magic expensive kingdom <laughs> yeah it's the magic money maker for them that's for sure so do you think they uh knew about these telluric currents when they built wally world um you mean disneyland yeah well there's oh, a yeah. little reference there sorry i, I, oh, should, oh, I, I thought yeah, everybody um, had seen national lampoon's vacation <laughs> it, it, it is i i suggest and theorize that i propose that yeah, um, the guy who was hired to engineer Disneyland in the 50s was a guy named uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt Wood, C.V. Wood. He was working for, get this, the Stanford Research Institute, SRI, the same place that Hal Putoff and, and Russell Targ and SRI came out of. Okay. And C.V. Wood was uh, in circles, um, you know, was friends with known psychics and and writers of esoteric stuff he was into this he was one of the founders of what's called the mind science um foundation i think is what it's called and um one of the guys who ran that was uh uh, tom swift the uh the wealthy philanthropist guy who was known to have gone on expeditions looking for the abominable snowman 
and you know the yeti and and such and so cv wood was into this esoteric stuff in the 50s when walt and roy disney were formulating their plan to build disneyland and they went to sri as a you know a, a consultancy um to get input on where would be the best location, you know, how, how should they do this? How should they do that? And Wood was the SRI guy assigned to work the Disney account. And he liked the idea of the project so much that he left SRI and went to work for Disney to be the chief engineer of physical Disneyland. So you got a guy who's into esoteric and paranormal stuff who's been handed the job to physically engineer Disneyland. And that's, you know, a big part of the theory that I propose is that he knew about this inner. He's the one. Uh, the Disney's were looking at either uh, San Fernando Valley or they were looking out here at San Bernardino Valley, uh, actually over in, in the Inland Empire out here by Riverside. Um, they were looking at other locations. And C.V. Wood is the guy that said, no, you want to get these 160 acres in Anaheim, these orange groves. So C.V. Wood is the guy that actually selected the site and, you know, uh, presented it to uh, Walt and Roy. This is where you need to build this park. And now, of course, you know, he backed it up with Anaheim's going to be a growing community. It's going to be centrally located in Southern California. And, you know, you're going to get the optimum, you know, geographical location. It's the population grows and blah, blah, blah. But think about it. This guy was really into the esoteric and the paranormal. And he's the one that picks the specific. It could have been anywhere in Anaheim, but he picked the specific spot that, again, my guy theoretically says, look at these. Uh, when you read the terrain with geomorphology, you've got this intersection of these three uh, telluric currents. You know, again, that's that's my theory. But, um, you know, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people love that book. And, um, uh, you know, it's it's in there. How do you come up with all of these sort of coincidental I, uh, synchronistic types of, of things i mean maybe oh, they were intentional maybe they weren't but they sure are interesting to uh to consider research and investigation uh, i mean again it's it's i know you were just speaking colloquially but think about it i i it's not that i come up with it it's that i find it you know through research and investigation and and then of course based on what i find uh, it's my uh, I'll say and I identify this, you know, basically it's my analysis, my speculation that I think this is what these things mean or could mean. So as know, a writer, then to, you you sort of grab onto a, a string and just start pulling at the thread. Yeah, I pull threads. And see, and, yeah, interesting. I pull threads and, um, y- you know, I, I look, my, I tell people, you know what, disagree with my conclusions and speculations all day long. We've got more to come with Walter Bosley and his barking dog with Gene and Randall. You're in (laughs) the Paracast. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Normal blood pressure, naturally. How would that make you feel? I'm Don from New Mexico. Uh, January of 2000, I had a heart attack. Uh, Then my real health began going downhill. I had high blood pressure, diabetes, poor vision. I wasn't sleeping well. I was a mess. Don reports dramatic improvements with heart and body extract. I started taking heart and body extract from within a few days. I started sleeping better. My blood pressure normalized. My diabetes normalized. My sleep improved. Experience these benefits and more when your body heals itself with the assistance of heart and 
and Body Extract. Order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. That's hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. And folks, I did not expect this at all. By the 7th, 8th, and ninth day, I saw dramatic improvements from taking Heart and Body Extract. Heart and Body Extract comes with a 100% ironclad money back guarantee. Details at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 for Heart and Body Extract. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper, article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not Teddy Bear. And the reason I say that, because if Teddy Bear is barking, they can hear it a half mile away, because he is a tenor. <laughs> I mean, literally, oh this dog is a tenor. You hear that dog no matter what. This dog has a gentle, <laughs> calm, relaxing bark. What am I talking about? Walter Bosley, let's continue. So I enjoy the Disney theory here. But then we might encourage people to break in there at night and kind of start digging things up. <laughs> I don't think they'd really find anything in, in that sense. I think the kind of things I talk about Disneyland or um, it's clear for you to see um, as far as what was put there to take advantage of this esoteric location. It's in the symbolism, uh, particularly around fantasy land. You know, it's in, it's in the juxtaposition of things. It's in understanding, for instance, it's, and I go into this in the book, you know, it's my opinion that there's a reason they centered fantasy land right where this alleged intersection of this Tiller current is, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you delve into the, the stories, the folklore, the fairy tales that um, Disney drew from, you know, the things he did, you know, Snow White, Pinocchio, and such, all of that, when you dig into the actual lore, the ancient and the folklore, you find the esoteric uh, true meanings of these things. For instance, uh, and I talk about this in the book, you know, the image of the little gnome, you know, the little gnomes with the red cone hats. Well, you know, there's one source that points out that these uh, gnomes, first of all, they weren't little guys. They were normal sized humans. And these hats start out white, according, you know, to this one source. I find this interesting. But they drink the menstrual blood of virgins from those hats so that they eventually turn red. 
And this is done for, you know, ritualistic, esoteric, the knowledge and connecting on the higher levels of consciousness and all that stuff. Now, whether that lore itself is true or not or anything, it, it's it gives you a different image of the little garden gnome or the or as in the Disney case, the seven dwarves, right? Snow White and the seven dwarves. You know, you you think, oh wow, okay. It, when you're at Disneyland, there's imagery that's on the carousel. Okay, of uh, keys. You have like two keys on one of the shields. You have a face that's in different spots on the carousel. Is it male or is it female? Well, in my analysis, that represents the hermetic hermaphrodite. In alchemy, the hermaphrodite is a symbol. And here you have this face. So are keys. Okay, but here you have this face that is it male? Is it female? Well, that could be the alchemical hermaphrodite on the carousel and the bit with the keys, you know, that's in alchemical and hermetic and esoteric lore as well. So you're standing there in fantasy land, you're looking around and when you know all this stuff, you're just seeing things left and right. Joshua Cutchin, who's an author, I think you've had on here before. Um, I, I think he's, he might be in California right now. Anyway, he's been posting stuff of his trip to Disneyland and he, he knows what I'm talking about. And he's pointing out, it's like, Oh my gosh, um, look at this, look at that. He even mentioned me. He said, well, that Walter Baza, we're friends. He says, boy, he's not crazy after all, because the, the symbolism <laughs> is definitely there. I might be crazy, but the symbolism <laughs> is there. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, Latitude 33 was, it can be kind of a trippy book when you think, wow, was it stuff, did, did these guys really put this stuff in here? And what's it, what is it doing on the, uh, the, the subconscious level? It's my opinion that the whole if, – if I'm right and C.V. Wood engineered Disneyland to, to be this psychotronic device, I, I do believe it was um, done for positive reasons just to make the park a more enjoyable psycho-emotional experience, not to do any kind of evil mind control. When people go off on this Walt Disney conspiracy stuff, I just – my head explodes. So they're not sending a subliminal message saying – You'll pay the four hundred seventy-five dollars to <laughs> no, go to Disneyland. It's more, it's more just to create a good feeling, kind of forget the outside world and enjoy yourself. Now, again, I defend Walt Disney. Now, yeah, he drank, he smoked, he cussed, he hated unions, um, blah blah blah. But you know what? When you look at anything r- truly nefarious and evil that the Disney Corporation could have done or does, that's long after he died. Uh, I mean, I take issue with some of the stuff Disney does today. And has done since he died. But um, Walt himself was not a Mason. He was not, you know, it's, yeah. Okay, let me just give you this information here. Okay. Mm -hmm. A Disneyland or California adventure remains $97 for low demand days, such as weekdays in May. A ticket for yeah. regular demand, this is interesting, it's like a hotel almost, $117 uh-huh. is when they raise their prices. And the price of a ticket on peak demand days is $135. Yeah, uh, you know, um, I, I, I would like to comment on that. All my life, I personally loved Disneyland. When I was a kid, it was my favorite place to go. I, I have Disney, you know, books in my collection, you know, the big the big expensive thick picture books because i'm a fan of the classic disney stuff okay i loved going to disneyland okay since these price let let me tell you something on my very best day at disneyland there's never not then nor now anything in that park not the best day in that park is worth that much money to step foot in that place well i know i went to Disney World in Orlando with Mm -hmm. my wife and my son. And this has got to be 20 years ago. And it cost a fortune. And we did all the things to find discounts in those days. This is before the online world at Hotwire and Expedia.com and all those places. And Priceline with William Shatner's daughter, all that stuff. We went then. Mm -hmm. And it really required saving for a long, long time. Yeah. I didn't feel that great. I mean, it was okay, but it didn't grab me quite as much as the original Disneyland. Maybe that's just me. Right. Well, and even the original, you know, the last time I went there, I couldn't believe the condition of certain areas of the park. 
uh, look, particularly when Walt was alive, but even for years after that, they never would let handrails, the paint on them, get worn off. They would never let grime gather on any surface, the trash cans or anything. And I was looking at grime. I was looking at worn paint. I was looking at areas of the park that were just neglected. It, it was it was just, uh, that was it. That was my last time. In fact, I went with Seshari, my guy who's the author who does the geomorphology thing. When I went with he and his brothers in 2009. That well, you see, nowadays, Disney has all these expenses. They got to fund all those. Two hundred or three hundred oh, million dollar movies, They're Star Wars so movies, and Marvel movies. Look at what they own. Look at what they own. They're making so much money that they could, uh, you know, they could they could go back to making it forty five dollars to get into the park, and, with, yeah, and that includes your unlimited pass. That might also be crowd management. If it gets too crowded, the best way now to that, uh, restrict the crowd is to raise the price, but that affects people however, who don't have the money. Let me do the break, then we'll have okay. our however. we got more yeah. to come with Walter, Gene, and Randall. You're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Hi, I'm Patrick Kolbeck, and I'm running for governor. Michigan roads look like the surface of the moon. We need to do better than that, but I'm tired of being told that we don't pay enough in taxes. In 2015, 81% of voters rejected a tax increase. What happened after we said no? Rhinos in Lansing raised taxes without a vote of the people. Then they actually transferred $400 million from the transportation budget to fix potholes in their expansion of Obamacare. As governor, I will be focused on road quality, not tax increases. Principal solutions prioritize your best interests, not lobbyists. Paid for by Patrick Kolbeck for governor. Healthcare reform is confusing, but whether it's finding an affordable insurance plan, keeping your doctor, or being able to afford needed prescriptions, navigating the healthcare system has become a challenge. Control your own healthcare costs and choices with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of each other's medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. It appears to have been a close call for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro as he was giving a speech at a military event. Officials say drones loaded with explosives detonated close by. They claim it was clearly an attack on Maduro. He wasn't hurt, but some National Guard soldiers were. BBC correspondent Duncan Golestani watched the video. You can see the President Nicolas Maduro speaking at an event, an outdoor event, and then the camera shakes. He and others look off, and then the transmission cuts away to faces in the crowd. And then if you look, you can see people dispersing away after we now believe was uh, an attempt on Nicolas Maduro's life. There's no word yet on who is behind the drone attack. You're listening to USA Radio News. There's no question you need omega-3s. But which form should you take? Fish oil or krill oil? Scientists have debated this for years. Luckily, there's a new solution to satisfy everyone. It's called Krill Omega 50 Plus. It combines ultra-pure fish oil and joint soothing krill oil together in just one tiny pill. It's so powerful, it can promote the health of your heart and your arteries. And if that wasn't enough, it can also boost your joint comfort in just days. We're so sure Krill Omega Omega 50 Plus will work for you. We'll even send you a free bottle to put to the test. The debate is over. It's not fish oil or krill oil. It's both. And now it's free. Just pay $4.95 for shipping and claim your free bottle. Call now. 1-800-399-6392. 1-800-399-6392. That's 1-800-399-6392. 
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap, even though I slept eight hours. When I invented my pillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. My pillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster, and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed; it's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. This is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Okay, so um, what I said before we broke was that yeah. maybe a high price is partly crowd control. So if people can't afford it fewer people come but they still make more money with the higher prices but guess what if they're doing that it's not working that's the other problem with disneyland it costs a fortune to get in there and then when you get in there the place is always so darn crowded that it's just you can't enjoy it so no they're cranking that price up it's a cash grab it's a a money cow whatever you want to call it they're doing it to just make as much possible money as they can because the place is always there's really too many people there you can't um, see a lot of stuff because of the crowds i know what you're talking yeah, about you're yeah you're standing in long long lines even with fast pass you know you're standing in line it's just ugh. i'm not an advocate of uh, that park like i used to be it's it's yeah well you can see how when it was created that if you're going to create a fantasy land, you're going to want to have something to base it on. So mm-hmm. it, it would be pretty normal for artists and conceptual people to look at the legends and myths and, and build that into the architecture and, and so on. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it necessarily has to be made into kind of this sort of you know, kind of a big mystery. And then if there just happens to be something like teller currents in the area, which are kind of all over the world anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, you, know, you could grid. Yeah, and it is a real scientific thing, like you say. But, you know, you could point that out and then point to all of the, the symbolism. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of symbolism in Disneyland. Of course, it's there on purpose. It's there to draw your attention to the the myth and mystery. Mm-hmm. And so it, I guess it depends on what the person who's being exposed to it wants to think of that. Well, it's superficially, it's, oh, look, there's the dwarfs, there's Pinocchio. Oh, there's, a, there's the crow that was... You know, the witch's crow in uh, uh, Snow White, there's the, oh, the King Arthur carousel with the happy, uh, looks like a jester face. Um, superficially, this is stuff in movies we made. These are characters, or this is just what you find, you know, in King Arthur's court. But under the surface, 99.9% of the people going to that park aren't familiar with the symbology, the double entendre of what they're looking at. They're not familiar with what the crow actually means. They're not familiar with what the origin of the carousel was. They're not familiar with what the dwarves might actually represent and the hats that little gnomes wear and stuff. Yeah, sure. It could all be really interesting from a mythological Mm -hmm. perspective from someone who is aware of all of that and make it even Mm -hmm. a more interesting place to visit. Yeah. You know, that doesn't necessarily make it an actual magical place, of course, but. Oh, right, right, right. You know. Oh, yeah. What I present is just a it's a theory. It's what I think. Remember, here's the thing. And I say this in the Empire of the Wheel stuff. Rick Spence and I do in the first book and I I repeat it. C.V. Wood, it it doesn't mean that we have to believe that C.V. Wood actually pulled this off. What I'm presenting is here's the details. Here's the facts. Here's the reasons why I think C.V. Wood thought he could or believed he could make this happen. Okay. You could, you could take that approach too, that it's like, well, I don't believe it's possible, but 
yeah, I think he thought it was possible. And I could see where he did this, that, and the other, because he thought this is what he was doing. Um, oh yeah, sure. It, it, it's kind of like when an investigator profiles a serial killer, right? The serial killer thinks that if he kills old ladies on top of uh, Mount Shasta on Thursday afternoons at 3.30 <laughs> p.m., right. that he's doing some type of magical act. And that's right. why we're finding all the bodies of these old ladies on Mount Shasta, blah, 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 blah. But what if he learns then that it's Friday well, morning? Oh, my uh, God, let, it's Friday morning. Me, no, go ahead. What the profiler does says, okay, this is what this crazy guy believed, and I have to understand what he believed in order to catch him, in order to figure out what he was doing. It doesn't mean that I think there's any magic to him killing old ladies on Mount Shasta. And and that's the way you could look at Disneyland and C.V. Wood, is you don't have to agree that there's any magic going on, but you can look at it and say, oh, wow, it looks like this guy you know, might have thought he could do this. And and that in itself is... But, yeah, uh, we can look know. at it in an objective historical fashion, and it still can yeah. be interesting. Has there been any kind of uh, more weirdness type stuff gone on or been associated with uh, the, any of the Disney stuff that you know about? Like stuff that people would say, well, that really is weird. I mean, I know the haunted house is just mirrors and a roller coaster, but well, you know, there, there, are, there is some weird stuff. There's a chapter in my book where I talk about the reports of ghosts that people have claimed to have encountered at the park employees as well as as uh, i think guests but mostly employees it's my opinion that if you look at what i propose that cv wood did it's my opinion that in 1982 with the redesign of Fantasyland, they moved some things around they moved the carousel from its original spot it's my opinion that when they moved the carousel this device theoretical device that cv wood thought he was creating in my opinion, would have been theoretically deactivated. Really, the and anything that CV Wood was trying to do, in my theory, would have been done. Would have been uh, uh, happening between 1955 and 1981. Um, and then it's my opinion that once they, because the carousel, the turning of the carousel, and that's all in the book. We don't have time to go into here, here. But the carousel was the the operative thing that made it all work. And moving the carousel off the intersection of those to alert currents, theoretically deactivated Disneyland as a device. Um, <laughs> for what that's worth, <laughs> actually, that's uh, that's that's kind of interesting. I I like it. When it comes to Disney, there I mean, there's no question that it's had a major impact on our culture. There's mm-hmm. there's a whole uh, phenomena that they they call Disneyfication mm-hmm. now, and which is the process of stripping away our reg recognition of the objective realities and repackaging it in a sort of sanitized culturally approved format that sells Mm. so it's a it's a worldwide phenomena in and of itself that's had a lot of impact on people yeah and i can't necessarily say in a in a good way but i mean some of the disney stuff is like i grew up with it and and uh, the films are heartwarming and but you can see how it programs us too to think in particular ways that are in line with our particular social conditioning yeah, in uh, but Western you, society. Yeah, but remember, um, our main initial exposure to things Disney is in childhood, right? Right. And most people, you know, at some point in your life, you're made to understand that you got to grow out of certain things. And that's even the perceptions on what life and the world are. We know as grown-ups that that changes because what happens? We, we make our right turn out of childhood and go slamming into that brick wall of life, as my high school history teacher used to say. And, you know, we have to learn that, OK, that perception that the happy little Disney movie taught me is not truly the way things are and not realistic. And that's part of growing up. So, you know, when I hear adults, I'm not saying you're doing this, but they're out there. When I hear adults lamenting that oh my gosh, I was brainwashed by what I watched in the Disney movies and it gave me this percent. I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, you, you need to grow up. You need to realize that, well, of course life is not, you know, what's in a fairy tale Disney movie or any movie for that matter. You know, it's, we do live in an era where people um, have a tendency to just not want to take personal accountability for their own um, lives, their own uh, way they look at things. They they want to blame something or someone else. And I think that's where um, 
you know, uh, some of that comes from, you know, maybe more than some of it. But um, so, so beyond that now, when you are talking about playing mind games, right, and getting into our psyches, you know, if you're, if you're talking about that, yeah, okay, that gets into playing a game where, you know, it can even work on adults and it's kind of they're doing something that people generally feel like, okay, that's not cool. You shouldn't be doing that. There you is know, nothing wrong um, with your television set. We yeah. are controlling transmission. We're also controlling yeah. the fact that there's a commercial announcement coming up. Mm. That's why I did the silliness, Walter, <laughs> Gene, and Randall. Walter, it's your turn to be silly. You're in. The Paracast. listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Broadcasting to over a thousand radio stations, GCN programming is in all of the largest markets. A GCN advertising career could be the business opportunity you've been waiting for. Companies need hardworking representatives just like you to handle their needs, while you earn residual income which can last for years. Companies are buying and they need you. Email advertise at GCNlive.com or call 877-996-4327. That's 877-996-4327. Ted Anderson telling you about Jordan Rubin's Beyond Organic Green-Fed Raw Cheddar Artesian Cheese featuring whole milk created through ancient dairy breeding, unpasteurized, untreated whole milk on the same farm the cows graze, containing natural sources of omega-3s, CLA protein, calcium, probiotics, and enzymes. I have never tasted cheese this good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. Bacon lovers, we ship free. Try our amazing bacon. No refrigeration required. Proprietary value-added packaging provides 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Savory and delicious. Wholesale price for your everyday use. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-301-5435. That's 800-301-5435. 800-301-5435. 
This is Jessica Armand, founder of My Magic Mud. Our team helped organize a successful effort to remove fluoride from our city's water supply. This is our passion. My Magic Mud Oral Care purifies and brightens your smile naturally. GCN listeners, please support my family business by purchasing our products from your local health food store. We're also available at CVS Pharmacy. Or visit us at MyMagicMud.com and take 10% off now with coupon code GCN10. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. Okay, final segment with Walter Bosley. As I was trying to do mind control there, and I put myself to sleep, I did some hypnotism when I was about 20 or 21 years old, and I had some success. But then I gave it up. Walter Bosley with J. Randall Murphy. Well, we were just talking a bit about the social conditioning. That oh, yeah, the social with, conditioning, uh, yeah. Things like Disney and, uh, I mean, yeah, sure, we grow up, but how many people, as they grow up out of childhood, what's the first thing they do? They want to get married into a relationship where they think one person is going sure. to be their, their knight in shining armor or... Right you know, their, their princess bride and live happily forever after in the, in the palace. When that doesn't work out, they do it again and again and again. Yeah. The definition and, of insanity, but, right? Yeah. I quit after two. <laughs> <laughs> then they say, well, that just makes us, uh, you know, jaded and, and cynical. Uh, you know, jaded or enlightened. Uh, what I find is the people who would jump to the, oh, you're just jaded. Those are the people that are still drinking the Kool-Aid. Those are the people that are still clinging to the fantasy <laughs> and they don't want to hear that. Well, you know, maybe that fantasy doesn't work for everybody. You know, yeah, I, I, I haven't got married after the second marriage, but I've lived with two other girlfriends and I had a fifth significant relationship. So after five times of clearly Walter's doing something wrong, he's not choosing wisely or something, you know, I said, oh, OK, maybe this this model that you're talking about of, you know, being made it up and happily ever after. You know, maybe, um, you know, oh, it's, yeah, it's completely faulty to begin with. <laughs> well, it doesn't work for everybody. I've got friends that chose wisely and it's great. They're happily married. You know, they're with the right person, but it's, uh, well, there's it's not people, for everybody. But that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that I, you should, that's you know the way what? people are. <laughs> when I hear people say, well, you got to make it work. I'm like, oh, it sounds like too much work. I, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, folks, but the and I'm putting air quotes around the word magic here. But there's got to be that certain, call it chemistry, call it whatever. Uh, again, going back to you made the right choice. It shouldn't, honestly, it shouldn't be that much work. It should just be kind of something you both want and you both like each other, not lo just love. That's the romantic stuff, the sugar. But it's, it's got to be you just work, you click or whatever, so that it does all the work for you. It, it really shouldn't be that much work. Again, we go back to the people who who... They have to put a lot of work into it, and it's been a struggle for them. You know, we have this human tendency where people want to know that they want to feel uh, valid, that their choices were valid. So what they'll do is they'll project their values on other people. They'll say, well, I made this choice, so it must be the prime choice that people are supposed to make. So therefore, I'm going to tell people, well, you know, you sh you know, my choice is the right choice. You're making the wrong choice. And what they're trying to do is validate their own choice because they're not so sure about it. OK, and Absolutely. we find we find this a lot with the marriage model. There are people that, you know, they're thinking, well, I did the right thing. Right. I did the right thing. Right. Because somewhere in their mind, they doubt it. So then they kind of go like wildly in the of course, I did the right thing. And my choice is what everybody is supposed to do. You know, those of you who didn't do my choice, there's something wrong with you. The marriage model, when you get into talking about that, is a whole discussion in itself. You know, how much people buy into right. things and they shouldn't and, buy into. And Disney is a huge part of that model. Well, there's been books written about the whole thing where it goes back to and starts to, to uh, of course, marriage. Marriage actually goes back even further, of course. Of course. I mean, we've been living with this this model thrown at us for a long time, a lot longer than Disney's ever been around. But yeah, they do promote that. Uh, certainly. Absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah. To a huge degree children. to children before they even know and can be can think about it for themselves. They've already right. been imprinted with this is how it's going to be. Yeah, and this is what you should do and such. And it's this ancient model of, you know, the be fruitful and multiply thing. 
it, so it goes back to ancient times, of course. You'll notice if you study that um, the the wealthy, the people, you know, the monarchies and the, the wealthy people, they go about marriage in a different way. It's much more of an arranged thing. You know, it, it, you have in the old days, on certain levels, the husband and wife would, would not even sleep in the same bedroom, right? They would each have their own bedchamber for sleeping and stuff. And the only time they'd go into the other one's room was when it was hanky panky time. And it was really the, the, the poor people who, you know, the husband and wife would share the, the daily nightly bed. That's why to. certain very prominent people sleep in separate rooms, even hotel rooms, yes. even the yeah. that house that's colored white. You know, it's it. Oh, OK, um, we're going <laughs> to. Sorry apologize. about that. Uh, I, I couldn't but, I couldn't uh, resist when you said that I could not resist the insanity. Anyway, we're yeah, well, in our final segment of this episode. Uh, We've got about three minutes. Let's continue. So fairy tales are representative of the things that have influenced us, the, the folklore mythology since ancient times. And certainly in our modern era, uh, the last century, um, the Disney brand of that, you know, has promoted these same things. So that's the reference we have you know, to, to go with, of course, but it dates back to, to ancient times and it's a fascinating discussion. Absolutely. So uh, are you, uh, have you got any more speaking engagements coming up? Yeah. Maybe you should tell us about those. Yes. I'm, I'll be speaking the weekend of August 17th through 19th at a very new AG type event. Uh, some people were knocking me over the head for, uh, you know, I speak, if, if you ask me to speak somewhere, you know, unless you're an illegal group or, or like, you know, you know, it's an event. It's the 5D event in Los Angeles, and I'll be talking about my secret missions books specifically. Um, and it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's some things there that's not exactly my bailiwick, but I'll be there. And uh, again, that's the weekend of August 17th through the 19th. I'll also be going to the uh, Comic-Con in Palm Springs on uh, August 25th. Um, doing my YouTube channel video stuff. Um, so I'll be out there. You can see me wandering around out there. And um, of course, I have my Empire of the Wheel books that are in TV development right now. So is this going to be a fictional TV or a reality show? Dramatic. It's not going to be a, a, a reality documentary series. No, it's going to be actors and it's going to be presented dramatically. Yeah. Like hopefully, 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 no, not no, like, no, not a docudrama like True Detective season one or no pure drama. Sure. Oh, okay. Not like yeah. Project Blue Book, where they feature an action hero named Dr. J. Allen Hynek. And a lot of people aren't really happy about that. Yeah, we can do a whole show on that. I want to get the author of the Hynek biography and see what he thinks. Where do we find you online? Oh, I'm most active on Twitter and Facebook doing my commentary. I have a blog that uh, occasionally I get on there and put an essay, empirethewheel.blogspot.com. And also I have the Walter Bosley channel on YouTube, which um, I go through spurts of having a lot of videos. And then when I get busy, you know, I don't have a lot, but that's, that's where I'm at. You can find me there. Okay. And, also and my, turn books, my books are available print on demand at lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com. And he also turns up mysteriously enough at the Paracast forums. So look out for him. You can find us on Twitter if you look for the Paracast. I'm not big on tweets and stuff, but we report new episodes. Same thing with Facebook. We have two official Paracast fan clubs or whatever they are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We also have a YouTube channel. And we also have the Paracast Plus, all of this work. The Paracast Plus is a way to get a real special version of the show free of the network ads. You get the break mm -hmm. where we announce the break and one second we go to the next segment. So we have a one second pause that refreshes. We have the After the Paracast podcast, by the way, where you never know what's going to happen next. In fact, this show will continue on After the Paracast with Walter and with Randall. It is not censored. So certain words that certain people on our shows occasionally like to use, we allow it unfettered on after the paracast it's included with your paracast plus membership starting at $1.49 a week 
If you go for the five-year and lifetime subscriptions, guess what? You get free stuff. We'll throw in some free stuff to encourage you to go that way. Go to plus.theparacast.com for more information. Once again, plus.theparacast.com. Look forward to the new, new, new official Paracast store coming up soon. Randall, thanks for being the great co-host you are. Walter Bosley, thank you for joining us on the Paracast. Thanks for having me on. I like coming on and talking with you guys. Yeah, that was good stuff, Walter. Thanks. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.